Hello, welcome to this video. This is 5-6 and we are going to talk about the definite integral in this video. Um, the rest of the lesson will cover the fundamental theorem of calculus, so the future videos will talk about that. But first we're going to talk about the definite integral. Uh, up until this point you guys have only worked with the indefinite integral, right? When we integrate we add c and that leaves literally infinite possibilities for, for what a function could contain. So today we're going to talk about a finite uh, space or area underneath a curve. So let's go ahead and look at the lesson. And here this says a definite integral is written with upper and lower limits attached to an integration expression such as the integral of a to b f of x dx. And really this is the, the new portion for, for this lesson is we have limits, an upper bound and a lower bound of what we're actually integrating for. The value of the definite integral um, may be thought of as the signed area from the lower limit, which is uh, represented here as a, to the upper limit, which is b. Okay, And it, it's signed, it can be positive, the area can be negative, um, or it could be zero. Unlike previous, previous integration processes, which produced an indefinite integral, uh, represent a family of curves, the definite integral represents a number value. So whenever you have a value from, or an integral from A to B, you're looking for a, an actual number. Now, um, some of the notes here are for a TI-84, which is a really, um, it's a, a different calculator than we use. We use the TI-Inspire. So I'm going to go ahead and show you some examples. Um, before I go ahead and, and show you how to calculate these, I actually want to show you visually what is going on. So I'm going to bring up the calculator and I'm going to add a graph. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in the function, the first example that they, they want us to go ahead and, and graph. So here is the, uh, the function and they want the integral from ne uh, negative 3 to 1. So I'll go analyze graph integral and visually you're, you're gonna see uh, what's what's going on here so from negative 3 that's negative 3 to 1 which is right there and you see this this gray area that is the integral that's the finite area that we're going to be calculating and actually uh, get a value for in these examples okay so uh, notice the area here it could be negative right the area here is positive and the area here is negative. So these kind of take uh, away area from, from here. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to open up a, a new page. I'm going to do this in the calculator section. So from here, we can go to menu, calculus, and I am going to take a numerical integral. That is a definite integral. So numerical integral, and I'll enter the limits, right? So lower bound is on the bottom, right? The lower, and then the upper bound, the upper bound, and then I'll enter the function. So x cubed minus 6x, and I want to integrate with respect to x, so we get 4. Okay, so that's our answer. So in our notes, this is equal to 4. That's it. All right. Now let's go ahead and uh, integrate this from root 6 to root 6. So I want square root of 6. Sorry, negative 6. to positive root 6. Come on, come on. There we go. And we get 0. 0, what the heck? Well, uh, I'm going to show you what's going on. I'll go back here to, to my graph. And I want to analyze the graph. And I'm going to take the integral. Okay, and I want it from uh, root 6 to uh, root 6. So notice that's roughly about here to about here. Okay, and what you'll notice about these two areas is they're mirror images of each other, right? We have some reflection going on across the, uh, the origin. So they, this one's positive, this area, this area is negative, so they cancel each other out. Okay, so um, of course, our answer is zero right because one's positive one's negative and they're exact same so we get zero 
All right, um, now I'm going to go ahead and integrate our function from negative 5 to 5. Copy. Okay, so from negative 5 to 5. And I don't want just this, I want the absolute value. So a couple ways you can do absolute value, you can type in ABS parentheses and it will uh, take the absolute value of that area. Uh, other, the other way to do this is to go to your um, the mathematical functions next to the book and you have absolute value sign right there. So I'll go ahead and I'll calculate this. Escape. I don't know why that won't go away. Okay, and we get 198.5. So 198.5. Okay, uh, another thing to, to make sure is in your calculator, make sure that your settings, um, you are float, you know, seven, eight. You just want to make sure you have a, a good value and um, to make sure you, are, you get more than... Um, you know, three places, right? Rounded or des uh, rounded or truncated, that's what you want. Okay, um, the next page in your notes, the next portion, um, it's it's just talking about how sometimes we can actually use the, the function, the math menu, and you can you can get a, um, a more approximated value. And I'm just gonna show you the, uh, the other way to kinda, oh, there's Ella, to uh, calculate this indefinite integral here. So, we have, and again in the functions, here is another way that you can calculate the integral. So from negative 5 to 5, and I'll enter the absolute value of x cubed minus 6x dx. Okay, and you get 198.5. So notice here, um, same exact values. Okay, just a, a different different way of, of computing um, the the integral. Okay, all right. So the next part, part five, it says use the idea of signed area to evaluate the integral from zero to three of the absolute value of two x minus one dx without using a calculator. So I went ahead and I drew the function ahead of time. And um, note, right, this function here, two x minus one, this is just a, a straight line with a y-intercept at negative one and a slope of two. Okay, but because we have absolute value, um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, reflect everything below the x-axis. There goes the lights. Woo! Above the x-axis. Man, that's what I have to do every time the lights go out. I have to run around. It's crazy. Okay, so I'm going to calculate the area under the curve. Okay, from zero to three. So there's zero. And then here is all the way to three. I want to calculate that area. So if I was to calculate area, well, what is area? Area is length times width. Okay, so I'm going to calculate each piece. So uh, this distance here, right, is one half. So the length is one half, and the height is one. And notice it's a triangle. So I want one half of that times one half. Okay, plus I have to calculate this area. Okay, so again, the area is, um, what do we got? One, two, so two and a half, so 2.5 times the height, and the height goes up to, to five, okay, times one half. All right, so we'll go ahead and compute this. So one half times one half gives us one fourths, okay, plus, uh, and what I'm going to do here, I'm going to rewrite 2.5, this will make more sense, 2.5, that's 5 halves, okay, so if I'm computing all of this, we get 25 fourths, which gives us 26 fourths, 
which would be fine. You can reduce uh, if you want to be 13 over two, and there's your area, okay? All right, um, number six. They want you to set up a definite integral which could be used to find the area of the region bounded by the graph uh, of y, okay, and that's shown at the right, and the x-axis, and the vertical lines zero to two. So again, um, I want to, to find the area, okay, so that's gonna require an integral, and it's gonna be definite. So that I want my lower bound, they say, is starting here at zero, and then the upper bound is two. So I'm gonna go from zero to two, okay? Well, I want the area underneath this curve. So what is this actual curve? Well, they give us the function here, okay? So that is two x squared minus three x plus two. And what are we integrating with respect to? We are integrating with respect to x. So I have dx, okay? And that's your answer. All right. That is it for this video. Um, in the next video, we'll go ahead and we will talk about uh, the fundamental theorem of calculus, and we're going to kind of discover. So the next video will just be more exploratory and kind of shaping the fundamental theorem of calculus. Catch you next time. Peace.